Okay, so we are done with the security audit. Uh, say we've uh, implemented everything that we wanted to implement. We've locked it down to the state that we think is sufficient. Obviously, best to get to 100 out of 100. Sometimes you cannot uh, because you have some, for example, some dependencies uh, from other systems that uh, rely on a particular way you do security, a particular way you, um, you do authentication and so on. And so sometimes it, it takes time before you can fix all of them. So say we, we are relatively happy uh, with the way that we've defined the API. However, the definition and the actual implementation of that definition might differ, right? So for example, you might claim that you only talk HTTPS but in reality, your implementation, the way you've set up the server, would still respond in HTTP if someone talks HTTP to it. Or, for example, you claim you only uh, do a get on this particular path. But in reality, if someone sends you a put, a post, a delete, maybe you would still respond. So you want to catch all of those discrepancies. And that's exactly what the conformance scan does. It's a dynamic uh, testing of a specific endpoint. And so you can provide your own endpoint or you can pick from the ones that are defined in the, uh, in the open API file, which would work in my case. Uh, you obviously, uh, hopefully your API by now requires some authentication. Uh, so in my particular case, uh, it requires an uh, access token plus the API key, not the best practice. That's why uh, it's not 100 out of 100, uh, but that's because I'm using uh, a Pixie API from OWASP, which is, uh, has been specifically uh, designed to be not uh, entirely secure. And this particular one requires an uh, API key being passed in a header. So I can just provide the, the token that works for this particular API. Review, I'm happy with all of these. I click start scan. So what uh, Foot2Crunch does now is it, it does uh, effectively this fuzzing uh, of the API. It takes a contract, that open API file, and then it generates all the use cases outside of that contract. So it uh, specifically sends the requests that are outside of the contract. So different paths, different verbs, different transports, different parameters. Each and every of these requests are not complying with the contract. So they all should get rejected. In this particular case, in 61 uh, cases, the requests that were invalid did not get rejected. So let's, uh, and so each and every one of those is a potential vulnerability, a potential issue. Uh, so let's um, see a few of those. So for example, um, the API says that uh, options uh, is, not, uh, is not supposed to be, to be the supported verb, but in reality we, we sent the options verb and it, it worked. Uh, actually, let, let's see which other verb issues we have. Uh, so you can see there's actually quite a few. And uh, this is uh, this actually uh, happens in real life. So for example, uh, you like like this one, uh, head, for example, is not defined, but but the, the thing responded uh, is a is a way that uh, GitHub quickly find you the, that issue. Uh, GitHub was um, had a vulner an API vulnerability that was exactly that kind of vulnerability. Uh, so uh, they were not expecting head requests. Head request was not defined as part of the API, but the implementation because they, they used Rails, uh, Rails by default was still responding uh, to head requests, uh, and because of that uh, implicit implementation, uh, they got uh, that that vulnerability. And you can read the details on how it actually works and how they, they got hacked because of that. Um, anyway, so back, back to the report. So uh, there are issues like that. Uh, there are issues uh, related uh, to, uh, uh, for example, you can see that here is our uh, min length, max length, things that we were fixing in the definition. Uh, our implementation is not is not following our definition. So even though we we say that we are not uh, we are not accepting parameters over a certain length, in reality we are right. So we are actually vulnerable even though we say we are not. Or for example, say required parameters right. So some of the parameters uh, our definition says that they are required. However, if someone sends us 
something without these, we still respond with, with 200. So all of these discrepancies are potential vulnerabilities that we are not aware of, right? So the backend code somehow still works with these inputs that are not valid. And potentially if attackers using some tools would find those discrepancies, then they might find the API behavior which has never been tested because typically uh, people test APIs uh, within the scenarios for which the API was designed. All of these cases are invocations outside of the definition, outside of the design of the API. So each and every one of them, uh, you never know how the API would actually behave, whether it would leak some particular data that um, attackers uh, might be interested in or open up some administrative access that they were not, the designers were never thought about and so on. So each and every one of those should be, should be fixed. And uh, this is uh, why you need conformance scan. And this is why that dynamic testing is a great addition to the uh, security added to the static analysis.